It's the difference between success and failure. Why is it that some companies are wildly successful? And why is it that 45% of companies end up um, out of business within the first five years, as Pat mentioned? What I, I'm personally obsessed with successful businesses. And I am obsessed with finding the secrets behind success and, and teaching those to business owners so that they end up being successful. That is what I love to do. So what makes a company successful? It's actually pretty basic. It just simply means that you grow smart. And growing smart means to grow profitably. Um, it's not necessarily bigger. Bigger is not necessarily better. You can have a lot of high sales at a loss and, and essentially go bankrupt. Whereas you can have few profitable sales and come out way ahead. So we focus on better, not bigger. My eight-year-old plays we all the time and his favorite thing to do is to build his avatar and he puts together the hair and the glasses and the t-shirt and the shorts and the shoes and he changes it and he thinks it's hilarious bottom line is it it's a similar concept of knowing who your ideal client is how old are they are they middle-aged are they young are they suburban or city dwellers are they interested in health are they interested in making money are they interested in traveling do they like luxury luxury um, it, you know, products or do they like to contribute to charity and volunteer? Everyone is different, but knowing who you're going after is really important. It's to never stop innovating. As you guys know, the only sustainable advantage is innovation. No matter how great you are, no matter how unique your product is, somewhere along the way there's going to be somebody who's either going to copy what you're doing or come up with a better one. So at some point in time you always have to be thinking ahead about how you're going to make your product or service better. The best source of information for that is going to be your client. If you listen to your clients, they will tell you what they don't like, what pain points they have, what is it that they wish you could give them that you're not giving them today. Number 10, and this one's my favorite, it's move beyond the competition. There are times when you should break the rules. There are times when you should refuse to play the dog-eat-dog -dog game. Yeah. Do you know the story behind Yellowtail Wines? Mm -hmm. They come from Australia. They wanted to break into the wine market. And they couldn't because their wines were not sophisticated enough and they couldn't compete with all the fancy French Bordeaux and Merlots and all the California wines and the, Argentina, the um, Argentinian wines. So what did they do? They said, you know what? Forget all that. We're not going to play in your territory. Your market's really small. Mar margins are really small. You only have so many wine drinkers in, in a country. I mean, you're not going to have too many more. It kind of stays the same. There's not much growth in it. So what did they do? They designed a wine for beer drinkers and for liquor drinkers. What do you think happened to sales? Through the roof. Who do you think bought the wine? Was it the wine, the, the wine snobs? Nope. All the people who like to drink beer and relax on the patio, they bought those wines. Yellowtail wine went into an untapped or underserved market and made a ton of money. So that is actually a really good example of how to do this. If you guys can figure out how to do that on your business, let me know, because I want more stories on that.